All right, last video we took a look at the product rule, which was multiplication of functions. This time we're gonna take a look at division of functions. So it'll look like y is equal to, say, e to the x over x squared. And this will be a problem where we don't simply make the denominator a product rule problem. In fact, I'd say the quotient rule isn't necessarily needed at all because pretty much everything can be turned into a product rule problem, but it's good to know, especially for long functions that are made shorter with this. So we'll jump right into the rule for that. Again, there's proofs online everywhere. I'm not going to go over the proof here, but if we have a function f of x divided by another function g of x, and we take the derivative, it is equal to the derivative of f times g minus f of x times the derivative of g of x, all divided by g of x squared. Now, this is complicated to remember, so what I would recommend is writing a short form for it, which is f prime g minus f g prime all over g squared. These are the same thing, this is a little easier to remember. If you keep your order f and g, you just shift the prime over one, just like with the product rule, and then you divide by the bottom squared. So we're going to take a look at the example y is equal to e to the x over 1 plus x squared. And this is slightly complicated, but hopefully this will make a little bit of sense here. So it's more obvious what our functions are in this because it is f over g. So obviously the top is f and the bottom is g. So y prime is equal to f prime of x, which we know is the derivative of e to the x, which is itself e to the x, times g of x, which is 1 plus x squared, minus f of x, which is e to the x, times g prime of x, both the derivative of 1 plus x squared is 2x, all over the bottom squared, so 1 plus x squared, all squared. I'm not going to bother factoring this out, or expanding it rather, because I doubt it's going to simplify anything. In fact, if I'm lucky, something will cancel on top, so expanding it's not going to help us a lot. Okay, so let's simplify this further. Well, we can factor out an e to the x, and then we get 1 plus x squared minus 2x all over 1 plus x squared all squared, and we can factor the top to make it look a little bit nicer. So this will be e to the x times, well, this is x squared minus 2x plus 1 is x minus 1, x minus 1. So this will be x minus 1 squared all over 1 plus x squared squared. So really, if you're doing a problem on an exam, this is probably the end point, but taking it a little bit further won't hurt. I would not stop here since you haven't done any simplification yet, but I, I think what's in the green box here is a is a good stopping point. So that was a pretty easy example, and in fact they're not going to get much harder, so what we're going to do instead is leave you with... Actually, you know what, I'm going to go through one more problem first before doing a practice problem. What if I have y is equal to x over some function g of x? I don't know what g of x is. Well, I'll rewrite the rule for differentiating. So the derivative of f over g is f prime g minus f g prime all over g squared. So if we take the derivative of this, y squared, or y is equal to x over g of x, y prime is equal to 1 times g of x minus f, which is x, times g prime of x. We don't know what this is, but we'll just leave it in the form g prime of x, all over g of x squared. And really, you can leave this as it is, but that's the answer to this question. You know, whatever function g of x is, you just plug it in afterwards and you can get your result. This is a very general question and it might throw you off because you're saying, well, what is g of x? And 
Well, you just use the definition of the quotient rule, and you'll get a nice answer for that. So, again, this question seems tricky, but the idea is to show you that it's almost exactly the same as everything else. You're just not given a specific function. Okay, so now I'm going to give you guys two, two practice problems. And one of them is tricky. And it's not tricky because it's hard. It's tricky because you might not notice what I'm doing to you. Okay, so 1, y is equal to 1 plus 2x over 3 minus 4x. I want to find the derivative of that. And the other one will be y is equal to v cubed minus 2v root v all over v. And again, we want to find the derivative of that. So pause the video, take a few moments to try these problems, and I'll give you the answer when you guys get back. All right, hopefully that was enough time for you to solve that problem. And, well, here we'll take a look at these ones. So 1 plus 2x over 3 minus 4x. Well, this is the derivative of the top, which is 2, times the bottom, 3 minus 4x, minus the top, 1 plus 2x, times the derivative of the bottom, which is negative 4x, all over the bottom squared, so 3 minus 4x squared. Again, I'm not going to factor out the bottom because that seems a little bit ridiculous to expand all that and look for something that'll change when it probably won't. Okay, so we can simplify some things here, so that's 6 minus 8x plus 4 plus plus 4 plus 8x all divided by 3 plus 4x all squared and we can do some canceling here so the minus 8x will cancel and this will become 10 over 3 plus 4x all squared so there's your answer i would say that's a fairly simple question and now we're going to move on to the one that might have given you some troubles or might have taken you more work than it should have because straight off the bat we can cancel out these v's and this becomes y is equal to v squared minus 2 times v to the half and this is a very simple problem because there's no product or quotient rules in here this is just the derivative of v squared which is 2v minus the derivative of 2v to the 1 half which would be 1 over the square root of v. Again, if we take a look at this more in depth, in fact, let's do something cool here where we take this 2v squared and make it like a giant magnifying glass or something. This is 2 times 1 half times v to the 1 half minus 1, which is v to the negative 1 half, which is 1 over the square root of v. So, they're all the same thing, but in case you missed that step there, hopefully that filled in the details. So that question was much easier than it looked. And you can, you, you can do the quotient rule for the whole thing, but it's going to be a lot longer and you're going to accomplish the same result. And in an exam where you have a limited amount of time, noticing these things is much more beneficial and much more important than trying to do a convoluted method because you're not going to get more marks for doing the quotient rule when you could do this question in about... 30 seconds just canceling out of E and doing it regularly. So hopefully that cleared up the quotient rule. Again, if you have forgotten the definition, I will write this one more time. F over G prime is equal to F prime G minus F G prime all over G squared. It is a good way to remember without using these functions or weird names. Just remember your F's and G's. In fact, if we remember the product rule as well, it's just equal to f prime g plus f g prime. So, this is a really beneficial way to remember these things, and of course you can do other things like c times f prime is the same thing as c multiplied by f prime. It's... Whatever method you use to remember these is perfect, it's just when you have long complicated functions like this, Making them shorter is always easy to remember them. So next time we'll come back with uh, the final piece of polynomial derivatives, which is the chain rule.